Okay, folks, welcome to Tuesday, the 13th of April, 2021. So we are in the age of DeFi, crypto, and all sorts of financial assets that, that don't make sense to a lot of people. And um, tomorrow, I think it is, we have the IPO of the crypto exchange Coinbase. And uh, we thought, who better to get on to have a look at this for us than Mr. Eddie Dalmes? Well, thanks for the introduction. And, uh, and, and his haircut. Yeah, I mean, first of all, just off camera telling Tim, apologies to all the viewers for my my hair or my my mane, my helmet of, of, of hair. Uh, the lockdowns have eased in the UK, so have got a haircut booked, booked in for later. So uh, again, apologies in advance. But yeah, we've got the uh, Coinbase direct listing uh, tomorrow. Um, and wow, it's going to be very, very interesting. And it's quite hard not to get excited about this one, I have to say. So a bit of background. Um, it is going public via uh, a direct listing rather than IPO. Um, so the market makers are going to set the price and then it's going to start trading. And there's a few little uh, kind of changes uh, from the traditional IPO process, like no no underwriting and things like that. The price just is set um, and it just starts trading. So the rumored valuation tomorrow is going to be any, if, there's been a huge range, to be honest, anywhere from 19 billion all the way to 180 billion, which huge numbers, obviously. 180. But, wow. Yeah, I just heard. That. I just I just read 100. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So there was a, a range of all those different figures, but the the rumor is about 100 billion uh, tomorrow. So why is it looking so tasty? Obviously, we've seen a, a huge rally uh, in Bitcoin uh, and lots of other crypto. So over 800 percent over the last year. Um, and this is on fears of inflation, mon monetary debasement, increased institutional adoption, treasury utility by companies. And of course, uh, Michael Saylor, Elon Musk, they've all been uh, getting involved in the space. And it seems like even just the earth rotating on the access axis is making uh, crypto go up as well. Um, in terms of Coinbase um, and, the, and the valuation, uh, they actually just reported uh, their Q1 uh, kind of earnings, um, 1.8 billion in revenue, 1.8 billion. And that's actually on a net income of 700 to 800 billion. That's 60% higher, circa 60% than the whole of their fiscal year 2020 combined. And let's not forget 2020 was a great year for crypto as well. After that March sell off where we had that big liquidation event, uh, with stocks, gold, everything, um, because of Corona, you know, it had a massive, uh, massive year. Um, so it was a great year for crypto. Um, and yet Coinbase have absolutely blown their 2020 figures out of the water in one quarter. Yeah, so I, I had, I just, I did a little bit of research last night, right? 139% on revenue year on year growth. Q1 2021, 9x year, nine times quarter on quarter for 2021 q1 like yeah it's massive if you actually annualize that figure which you know can be irrational in some cases you know that's uh just holding the the environment of q1 constant obviously throughout the year that gets you to 7 billion right that's a huge number but if this crypto environment and the bull market continues it, it's not that crazy um, they, they also re reported their assets. Um, I think they hold about 11 to 12 percent of the whole crypto market cap. Um, it sits above 200 billion. And the real interesting thing about this for me is a clear paradigm shift. So 50 percent, more than 50 percent of those assets uh, are from institutions. So 122 billion. But what's even more surprising about this, or something to keep a note of, this is up from 45 billion at the end of 2020. So in three months, they've attracted another 70, 80 billion in institutions alone. So that's, you know, that's huge. Yeah, and I think there has awesome. been a huge paradigm shift. Um, and the way I view this, you know, it is hard to not get excited about this. And 
you know, the, the environment's perfect. Bitcoin's rallying into it. You know, if we see a sell off, obviously, uh, on the day of the, uh, of the direct listing tomorrow, I think that's actually unlikely. But the, the real key thing for me about this is it's a pure crypto play. And this is going to allow institutions that couldn't invest in Bitcoin. Okay. And think about that whole um, amount of available assets to invest that, you know, you look at uh, stocks, fixed income, gold, they, a lot of uh, portfolio managers simply cannot invest in crypto. It's just not an option for them. Okay. Hedge funds. And of course, um, you know, they have a bit more freedom. Uh, it all depends on investor policy statements and things like that. You know, they've not been able to invest in, in Bitcoin. You know, it's a huge career risk. Imagine if you're a, you know, 20, 30 year old, uh, sorry, career portfolio manager. And, you know, you don't want to ruin your career, a good career, investing in a speculative crypto asset that has a, you know, a relatively small history of, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 years. Okay. But if you invest in Coinbase, that's not necessarily a massive, you know, career risking trade in my, in my opinion, you know, that's just uh, an equity just listed on a, uh, a nice US exchange, you know, and it provides a great uh, crypto play similar to how Tesla was the one stop shop for a ESG play. What, what's the best way of playing ESG? Tesla. So the, that's the way I, I view this. And in terms of the valuation as well, you know, is it crazy? 100 billion? It's a massive number. If you look at Google, what they IPO'd out was 20 billion. I think that's been rumored. But paying 20 times revenue for brokerages is actually quite common. Look at Snowflake in terms of the fintechs that have been going public at 36 times revenue. You know, that they've been trading at huge valuations if you look at Snowflake and the other fintechs that have been going public. And then also we've had SPACs, special mm. acquisition uh, companies, blank check companies performing reverse mergers. They've been valued multi-billion on 2025 20, expected revenue. Compa uh, yeah. Coinbase is generating 1.8 billion in revenue in a quarter, 700 billion in net income in one quarter. So I want to I want to put the cameras on this because I was reading some financial projections on these guys last night, and they said that one of the one of the scenarios was a, a 0.01 percent change in their fee structure um, on the the revenues that they make on uh, on trading essentially um, would result in that net revenue of 1.1 billion for trading coming down to like 35 million. And it was looking at the story about, you know, in what, 2017, there was, a, or 20, yeah, 2017, a lot of these brokerage houses uh, really had to go down to free structures, like to, to place trades for free, like Schwab, so on and so forth. Um, and then there were comparisons to like ICE and CME, these guys as well. Um, but 100, those valuations were at 100 billion and really these accountants were looking at it from the sense of well actually it should the, the book value looks to be like 19 billion um and 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 that you know there are competitors in this space for you know for crypto like gemini the winklevoss twins uh, uh you know kraken binance um bitstamp bitmex there's, there's there are tons of people in there but i, I don't think they they have the same mass marketing engine that Coinbase have. I saw that they have for 12 to 14% plan for marketing activities for the, the year going forward. And I just, I just don't think Binance or Kraken or any of these guys will be even at the races with that sort of money. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting. I saw that same thing in the S1 uh, that they filed, obviously, for this yeah. direct listing, that they're going to be uh, directing a huge amount more um, into their sales and marketing. So I, I, I did see that as well. Um, but yeah, you know, who knows, you know, with the with this company, why it's so profitable is the margins that they they generate such a, you know, high margin business, and it is actually quite expensive, um, uh, the, the spreads. But you know, we're like we've seen with Robinhood uh, and the commission free trading, you know, th they'll find a way, 
if it is you know payment for order flow if it is you know further gamification of this coinbase and then the regulators will be interested as well um you know yeah we're, we're yet to see but i think they will be spending a huge amount more on that sales and marketing so that's definitely a a, a line item to watch for sure so it's, is there an indicative price being floated around for the ipo price not uh, not that i've seen um, but you know that's one thing to to take a note of this relative to an IPO, just like with Deliveroo, why that had such a uh, obviously it fell thirty one percent with the underwriting with the with the investment banks that you get with an IPO. Goldman actually stepped in uh, and injected. I believe they bought seventy five million worth of shares uh, of Deliveroo when it was under a lot of pressure. With a direct listing, you don't get that. So it's going to be set, the price is going to be set and then it's going to be, you know, pure uh, secondary market activity from there. There'll be no uh, stabilization. Um, so that's definitely want something to watch, but I can't see a negative a- outcome for this, for this IPO. It's going to be wild, um, but, you know, given the run up in Bitcoin and the, the environment at the moment, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a you know, great PR event for them. Uh, mm-hmm. to really hit the mainstream. The big question is, how much crypto does Eddie have in his portfolio? Well, we'll have to uh, show that in, a, in another video, Tim. Okay, we'll do it then. So listen, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, uh, Tim. Cheers. Bye-bye.